Spencer Linton teamed up with Jerem Jordan. It is our pleasure to welcome in the head coach of BYU women's basketball who carry a number six seed into the NCAA tournament, highest seed ever received in program history. He is Jeff Judkins. Coach, great to have you with us. It's good to be here. I want to compliment you on your reaction to receiving the six seed in the tournament because a few years back, <laughs> we poked fun at you with your uh, we, very, very the country. minimal reaction to uh, what happened, and we called it Juddy Face. I thought you were really, really <laughs> exuberant. I thought you did a great job yesterday. Well, you know, I kind of got... Uh, Reprimanded, maybe, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that I need to be more excited about it. And, you know, it, it's a real stressful time. It's kind of like you're sitting there and you just got done with the test that you're taking and the teacher is yelling out or saying the scores of your test and you're waiting and you're waiting and waiting and pretty soon you think you're getting this and then you got that. And so um, I knew this year we we're, were, were going to be in. So that, that worry was totally gone uh, and so it's exciting for us to be able to know that we're I mean our hard work beforehand is what paid off for us I'm recalling the first test I took at BYU I walk <laughs> down from the brim hall I look up at the screen and it says like 38 or something. <laughs> I was like oh my god I suck so bad <laughs> you were on the bubble and it was, popped and you were right. I wasn't yeah. even in the NIT I was way <laughs> out of there <laughs> Okay, you said you wanted something, and you got something else. What did you want? Did you want a five? I, it, it, I, I when I'm saying, I don't think it mattered. The, I guess, I guess my biggest concern is playing somewhere close, so that our fans could be able to come and support us, um, parents and all that. So you sh ship us back east. It's just harder. Where if you, if we could have gone somewhere else, like Tucson, or you know, just somewhere else closer would have been nicer. I, I wish they would have been. Uh, I mean, we were close. I think. I think if we'd have won against Gonzaga, it would have been a very interesting selection. With that way, did we get in the top 16 to be able to host? Do you, Do you feel like you would have been 16? It felt like they weren't giving you that because they were releasing that each week. But that you would have been a five had you been Gonzaga I, in the title game. I, I, I think you're right, but it would have been fun to then argue that. Yes. It would have been fun and, for and them say, to sweat and, a little bit. And us say, what more can a mid-major do yes. than what we did this year? You, you've, you told us to go build up our schedule. We did that. You told us to run through your conference. We did that. They told us to beat team, teams badly to keep your net high, which was 11. Yeah. We did that. Yeah. I don't think you could be much higher in the net, realistically. No. Like, realistically, 11 is amazing. It is. It is. Of what... And so we've done all that, and then now you don't reward us when you tell us to do all this. But, you know, this team's ex excited to be in the NCAA tournament. They're, the sixth seed is the highest we've ever had. Uh, it's a great seed. We've always done well in that seed. We've been the 11 most of the time. But, um, but you know, it, it's a great opportunity for us. The team we play, Villanova, is a very, very good team. They play similar to us. They shoot the ball well. They move the ball. They're smart. They execute their stuff, so it'll be a great matchup. And if we're fortunate enough to win that game, we match up good with the other two teams that are in that bracket. And and then if we luck out and win those, then same with the other. So um, it's a real positive thing for us. I just wish, like I said, we were closer. Um, the Tucson would have been really nice because our fans could – could really get there. Sure. Jeff Judkins with us on BYU Sports Nation. A note before my next question, Jeff. I legitimately had one fan message me on Twitter last night and a couple of fans text me and ask, how is the cheapest or what is the cheapest way to get to Detroit? Because we're not going to miss this wherever yeah. they send us. And so I think that the interest, even though it is tough, you might not have as many, the interest is there. Well, like we, it, we, It's we really been hope. built up. I mean, you know, we've had unbelievable – support this year i mean the you know, last home game but even down the tournament i mean we we had a really good turnout for us for both those games and and um you know i think i think by nation has, has done a great job this year of supporting all their teams and we we as coaches appreciate all what the fans have done and you know sometimes you take things for granted and last year we had no fans and it was exciting to play, but it's not what it is now and the excitement and people. And uh, so we just hope we can continue to go and 
if fans could get out there, we'd love to get there. I think the fastest way is go to Detroit and probably drive to Ann Arbor, probably, you know. Uh, when I was tried out for the Pistons, we practiced in that facility, so I know it pretty well. So it's it's going to be old memories, you know. Sure. On that way, I found a flight into Cleveland for anybody wondering for three hundred bucks round trip. It's two hours and forty five minutes oh, from wow. Cleveland to Ann Harbor. Well, do it. <laughs> yeah, I know my son Jackson. He's going to school at West Virginia. He's getting his doctorate in sports psychology and. He said, Dad, it's five and a half hours away. I'll be there. So nice. Um, maybe there'll be some other fan BYU fans back east who want to come. Certainly the uh, NCAA has tried to uh, you know, make, make certain measures more equal this year. They're calling it March Madness. They're calling it the men's tournament. Uh, you know, hopefully the weight room's good. That's what started all of this, <laughs> yeah. right, which was yes. great. Yes. Um, they went to 68 teams. There's still things to be done, though. Um, where do you feel like – the NCAA still needs to help make the women's tournament as as similar to the men's as possible. My, I already complained about the team sheet not being the same. Yeah, that's probably one. And probably number two is don't play on home court. You <laughs> want a neutral site Neutral situation. site completely. Okay. Um, you know, so that it makes it more fair for teams to have the opportunity and try to do what the men do. They try to schedule um, games where – they feel the fans are going to be able to come closer to, you know, you know, to do that. Um, I really liked the thing last year of everybody going to the site and making it a, making it a trip and everybody's playing different things, but the, the NCA is all there. I really like that. I, I, I think when we had opportunities to kind of give our opinion on a survey, I, I really said, hey, I really enjoyed that. I thought it was more of a, a NCA environment. Um, tournament, but um, the first thing they need to do, I think, is change it where it's not going to be teams host. It, you know, and I know you don't get the fans and all that, but you know, as many as they think. But I think if people want to follow you and you're at a close distance, they're going to come. They're, you know, they're they're going to be able to do that. So I think that um, it's going to be interesting. That the 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 competitive is pretty. There could be three or four teams this year that can win this thing where. I couldn't say that 10 years ago. It's, yeah. it's, it's UConn and Tennessee in the finals, you know, or Stanford. It, now it's anybody. Anybody can. Yeah. There's a lot of good teams. And you kind of saw it with with Baylor and Louisville, who was going to be the number one seed and how it bounced back and forth. Well, they're having a hard time deciding that, where in the past has been pretty obvious. These are the four teams. It's going to be it's going to be a fun tournament. On the Slex show yesterday, South Carolina went wire to wire. Right, yes. number one, and they said twelve out of the last thirteen times that's happened, that team won the national championship. So it's Gamecocks versus the field. Is that what it is? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what it is. I'll right? tell you, Stanford's pretty good, and the defending uh, champs, right? Yeah, they're very good. And North Carolina State, I've seen them, and they're, they're, they're he's done a great job. Um, two years, not just one year. He's had kids come back, and um, there's a lot of there's a there's a couple teams, you know, like Iowa State. I thought is definitely one of the top eight teams. They got moved to a third seed, but they'll get even. They'll meet the team that got ahead of them uh, in the Sweet 16 if they get there. Go Big 12. Yeah. <laughs> We're all Team Big 12. Yeah, that is, that, that is, you know, it's really funny you say that because I kind of looked at that in this, in this selection. Like, how many teams in the Big 12 got in? Where are their seedings and all that? So how many was it? I can't remember. It was six, and I think four of them got really, you know, got, got good, you know, good seeds. So. Six of the ten. Uh, There's no. ten teams in the middle. It should That's... be. It should add eight. But there was one team wow. that was that was, I think, was kind of on the bubble and it didn't for some reason. Only they, they, six. Yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna have what? Tw- we're gonna. It'll have... be fourteen for two years, and then it'll yeah. go down. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be interested in what they do with that. Yeah. All right, Jeff. Let's talk about the response of your team and the mentality overall after the loss to Gonzaga in the championship game. We heard from Paisley Harding earlier, and she mentioned. Look, there's clearly a chip on our shoulder. We're going to play with it. Uh, maybe the seating and the region adds more fuel to the fire in that regard for your team. What's the team mentality like as they now prepare for, as you called, a very good Villanova team? Well, um, I think it was hard. You know, we've we've had so so much success this year, and to lose in the tournament, knowing that we 
didn't play like we can play. I think that's the biggest thing. Losing is hard, but if you go out and you play your best and you lose, but we didn't play BYU basketball. We didn't play with with the intensity that we needed. We didn't do something. We didn't shoot the ball definitely not well in the tournament. Um, and I think that part is hard. It was a couple of days was was tough. You know, we we gave some time off and then we came back and practice and and I think we're getting more focused and getting more of that. Um, you know, mojo, you know, I mean, getting more confidence. Last night, see where we got we got put in. I think I mean, my team was really excited to know that that's where six seed. We got a good chance of, of going going far if, if we play. And today will be an interesting practice. I'm sure it'll be a really exciting practice. They'll be ready to prepare for this game. And, you know, Villanova is a very good team. And uh, every team, I you know, you see all those teams, and you go, that team's good. I remember that team, that team. But it's kind of kind of nice. There was a lot of teams that got in the field that we beat. You know, they got to the field. So that's a real positive thing for us. Yeah, a quick, you know, look at uh, Villanova. Maddie Segrist averages 26 a game, almost 10 rebounds. She's a heck of a player. She's Biggest really player of the year. That's with UConn in the league. Yeah, she's, she's amazing. I mean, range, can put the ball on the ground. She can pass. She's, she's, she's a really good player. We're gonna have our hands full, and I don't know, I don't know yet who's gonna have that fun assignment to go. Okay, in. but you have a smile on your face. I I can sense you uh, welcome this challenge. I do because you're, you're like let's go because you know a lot of people think the Big East is a better conference than ours, and so now we have a we have a chance for us to sh- to show that BYU's been in a good conference. Maybe it's Lauren Gustin who uh, draws that assignment. Might be. It might be Paisley. Uh, yeah, might, there you go. Might Maybe be Paisley. Tegan. Tegan. Uh, Tegan had a great tournament, really defensively. I mean, she had to guard the the you know Fowler, and I thought she did as good as job on Fowler as anybody did. And and then she did a good job against Gonzaga with their with their strength. So this kid's a little different player. She like you said, she can go outside, she can go inside, and she's probably more of an outside player. She puts the ball on the ground, but she can Paisley score. Paisley, it ball. is. So we'll, so we'll see what happens. You think Paisley wants the challenge? I'm oh sure. My I'm sure she, I'm Paisley's sure she, like, it's you or me getting stitches. <laughs> Let's go. I'm sure she'd take <laughs> uh, Jeff, congratulations again Thanks, on a fantastic guys. season on the number six seed, making history, history with the 26 wins. Uh, it's just been remarkable. So let's give you the BYU Sports Station karma, man. And so, yeah, Don't we, get it done. We, we, Ann Arbor. We, okay, yeah. And hopefully we'll be able to be on TV. People will be able to see us and yes. support us again. I'm making a plea. You know, if you're within an eight-hour radius of Detroit. And you're yeah. an alumni of BYU, you must go. Just go. Just find a way to be. Yeah. That's a Saturday. And when do yeah. you guys leave, by the way? I think we leave Thursday morning. Thursday? Yeah. Get a full day on Friday. Yeah. Extra yeah. media the whole day. Yeah, okay, awesome. Stuff. It'll be fun. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Hey, thanks, you guys.